invest in daughters, sisters, and wives. They're gonna change our lives. In women, in girls. They'll make a better world. Invest in her. And now here's your host, Katherine Gray. Welcome to this week's edition of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Katherine Gray, the founder of She Angel Investors and the She Angels Foundation. And I'm so happy that we have on one of our She Angels Foundation board members today. She's a two-time Emmy award-winning producer. I'd like to welcome to the show, Robin Radin. Hi there. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. I'm so excited to have you on uh, for a million reasons. Um, I know you are an entrepreneur, you have your own company. And then as a producer, I always feel like producing really is very entrepreneurial, don't you think? I mean, it can be. Um, producing in nonfiction is so different from producing in the fiction world that, you know, one is very entrepreneurial and the other is, you know, um, more of storytelling. So. Right. I'm more in the storytelling um, lane of it, so it's not as entrepreneurial. More of the my business it takes on that role. Right. Well, uh, the reason I w I'm so happy to have you on today is that we have such an incredible lineup of women in our She Angels Foundation board, and you are among those incredible ladies. Two-time Emmy award-winning producer and six-time Emmy nominated. Hello, uh, you've been in this business for like 25 years and worked on some of the most incredible shows from Entertainment Tonight to more recently helping launch uh, uh, the um, Spectrum News, which yes. I love. I love that channel. Yes. And, um, and now you're working with Sirius Radio and we kind of connected uh, over you producing this new show during COVID called The Helpers. Mm -hmm. And you actually had featured uh, Catherine Curry Williams and I, my co-founder of the She Angels Foundation in this show, which was about, you know, people that are doing things during COVID to help other people. So it, it's an amazing series and I hope people check it out. You know, Sirius Radio, people don't necessarily uh, think of it as being video content. And that's something new that you're heading up there. So now people can go to their Sirius Radio app and actually get video content. Thanks to Robin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's so a few more people besides me, but thank you. Yeah. 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 And so, I mean, really a lot fun. of people might not know that. So I'm happy that we're, you know, uh, alerting them to that fact because uh, a lot of people love Sirius and they probably don't know that there's video series now. Um, so they have to check out the helpers. Yeah. Uh, it's a brand new venture for Sirius XM, which has been around for over 20 years, but the video component just launched. Um, it was a year last September. I mean, time has lost all meaning, but um and I came on board about four or five months after they launched, and I head up part of the um, Los Angeles office here. So the shows that um, are done out of LA, and I actually produced the first original content for the app, which was the show The Helpers. So yeah, that was Love really it. exciting. Love it. Well, people have to check that out. We, I know we had a great time doing it. We uh, got to go to some of the foundation uh, grant awardees that we um, were working with, like, um, uh, let's People's see, the Pottery, People's Pottery Project, Project right? yes, and um, the uh, Hope Gardens, Hope Gardens, right, which helps women of domestic violence. And uh, of course, People's Pottery Project helps uh, formerly incarcerated women get back on their feet, learning the the trade of pottery and uh, she, uh, Molly Larkey employs them there. So any, anyway, we just having a great time uh, getting to give back and pay it forward to these female founded nonprofits. And like I said, we have incredible people like you, Robin, on our advisory board. And I know Kat and I are so grateful for that. You bring so much uh, integrity and talent to our team. And Thank you. Uh, we're excited that we're working on a new project with you, a new TV project, but we can't talk about it yet, but we can certainly <laughs> let people know that something's forthcoming. So we're excited about that. Um, I want to talk, before we talk about your incredible career, 
I also want to talk about um, your beginnings because people, I think, you know, a lot of times they want to get in the business and they would love to be an Emmy award winning producer. That's a really a, amazing accolade. And so what was your journey? You, you grew up, you were born and raised in New York, right? Yes. And I really, you know, I, I, I fell into um, the radio station when I was um, in college and at West Virginia University. My mom didn't have a lot of money for college and West Virginia to me just looked like a fun school to go to. And I've actually been there. I had my best friend went there and it is a fun school. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was very affordable, much uh, more affordable than even in New York State College. Uh, yeah. which is really the reason I went there. And then it just so happened that they had uh, one of the top journalism programs in the country, which at the time I wasn't even interested in. I, I, I didn't know anything about anything really. And um, I, uh, I, I loved their radio station. I started working there and um, I wasn't a really very good DJ, um, but I was really interested in the news. And so I became a journalism major and then uh, sort of realized that it was all about internships and that the way to get jobs after college was to have an internship. Now, this was in the early 90s. Um, and so there wasn't really, you know, the internet, to be honest. It was kind of the dark ages. Um, and being, you know, a New Yorker, I just started like calling and sending my resumes to um, the news stations in New York City. Um, like stalking, hounding, you know, really not letting up. And I managed to get- True New first... Yorker, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I managed to sort of push my way into um, the local Fox station uh, the summer after my sophomore year and get my first internship there, uh, which really opened the doors to everything, getting that internship. Um, and it's funny because over the years, people have said, you know, but you didn't go to Columbia and you didn't go to NYU. Uh, so, you know, how did you, you know, get that internship so early or how did you get into, you know, the number one market and how, and I said, you know, I don't, I don't know. I was just really pushy. And I think that the woman I kept calling was just like really tired of hearing from me. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, if I don't give this girl an internship, I'm never going to stop hearing from her. So I really think that's what, what, um, initially got me in and I just, I loved, I had this real um, desire to get information out to people. And I also really at the time thought I wanted to be on camera. That changed pretty quickly in the early part of my career. Um, basically, as soon as I made my first resume tape, you know, my first demo reel, um, mm -hmm. as soon as I saw myself on camera, I did not want to be on camera ever. I, I, was I think so, a lot of people, I think most people feel that way. Yeah. I mean, I looked so young. When I was 22, I looked maybe 14. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, you know, wearing my mom's clothes. Um, so I would look like a grown up, and I looked like I was wearing my mom's clothes. <laughs> and it was just ridiculous. But I had a voice for it. And I really... You know, I, I really enjoyed, you know, doing it, but being on camera just wasn't for me. I just looked like this 14 year old girl wearing her mother's clothes. And um, I, you know, I made my demo reel uh, in these clothes and I was really proud of it because I, you know, wrote my own news stories and I um, hired this woman uh, to shoot me on camera. And then, you know, she edited it and sent me, you know, 50 copies of uh, this tape that I was going to send to, you know, TV stations all over the country to get my first reporting job. And I saw myself on camera and I just went, oh my God, no, <laughs> cannot. <laughs> so anyways, uh, after graduate school and, you know, uh, still sort of not really sure of exactly what I wanted to do, except knowing I wanted to work in news, I got my first job um, at a station in Cincinnati because I, I was in graduate school very close to Cincinnati at Miami of Ohio. And um, I saw the producers and they were telling everybody what to do. And they said, <laughs> you reporter, you're going to cover this story and you're going to write these stories and I'm going to put the stories in this order and these anchors are going to do this and they're going to sit here. And, and I was like, oh, 
I, I can do that. I can boss people around. I can, and then <laughs> I get to decide, I would get to decide like what stories go in the, in the newscast. And, you know, so I took the path of being a, a news producer. That's and, cool. Uh, so you yeah. started off in news and did that for, I think, eight years, was yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, I did three in Cincinnati. Then I got a job in San Diego, which was how I got to California. And um, there is actually no news in San Diego. So <laughs> that was an interesting year because it was very boring. Um, it was just, you know, we pre-taped the weather because the weather never changed. So our weatherman would like come in and record like three, you know, weather segments for the day and go home. <laughs> um, he wasn't even a meteorologist because why? That's so funny. And, you know, when I visit my uh, niece and nephews in Burlington, Vermont, it's the same thing. I'm so used to the L.A. news. It's so chock full of stuff. And yeah. they're like, somebody walked the dog today. <laughs> right. Exactly. Breaking news. Um, so I, um, I, I and I was the weekend manager there. I was 26 years old. And they had me managing weekends. And I remember Princess Diana died. And, you know, there was major national stories happening. And I would call my news director and, you know, what do I do? And he said, oh, just take network. You know, we were an ABC affiliate. Just, just you know, let the network cover it. And I was like, oh, okay, it's pretty easy. Um, and I was really bored. And so uh, I had a friend from Ohio who was, uh, who worked in LA. And I said, you know, you got anything? And he said, let me see if I can get you a, you know, an interview. He worked at uh, KNBC. He got me an interview and I drove up to LA and I never thought I wanted to live in LA. I was like, oh, it's so plastic. Everything is fake there. I drove up, I took the writing test. Um, they said, you know, we'll hire you, but you know, it's freelance, it's per diem. You know, we may need you, we may not. And I just looked around that newsroom and it was just buzzing with people and activity and people were running and things were happening. And I was like, I, I have to take it. And I just, I gave my notice in San Diego and I packed up all my stuff and I moved to LA and that was like 23 years ago. And I was in love with it from the second I got here. You know, so, I think that's yeah. so important what you're saying uh, to people listening that if they want to be in that business or be a producer is that it, it has to be something that you really love. You like feel that download, that passion, of course, yes. that's the way with everything. But, you know, uh, like you said, a lot of people do start out wanting to be in front of the camera. I have some actor friends who have become writers and producers because they realize that's really what they want to be doing. And, and so it's great that you you know, got in touch with that. And also that you took that leap. You know, a lot of people get stuck in a job and even though they're not totally content with it, they don't want to move on, but that's how you got to where you are. You took those chances and you took exactly. those leaps and that's always an inspiration. Tell me about your Emmy Awards. What was it like when you found out you won an Emmy? What did you win it for? Let's talk about the excitement of that. You know, my first one was in um, 2001. It was actually a, a team Emmy for um, coverage of 9-11. And oh, I won wow. that with um, the morning news team at Fox 11 in Los Angeles. I was actually in the booth. My show was on the air during 9-11. I was the morning show producer there. And that's actually, that was the catalyst that got me to end up leaving news because six months of covering 9-11, being a New Yorker, uh, having a lot of uh, friends who were affected by it. I was very blessed that my family wasn't directly affected by it. Um, but I actually lived in New York at the time. Wow. So I, I know what you're saying. It really was life-changing. It was life-changing. Yeah. I was in the control room uh, and while it was happening, and then also on the side calling my family and saying, you know, wake up, turn on the news, wake up, turn on the news. Right. Um, it was, it was really, and then we were on the air for 12 hour, hour shifts as producers during an emergency was you're, you're on for 12 hours off for 12. And that's still true to this day. Right. Um, so that's what was going on during the beginning of the pandemic. Cause I've been consulting for local news recently. So, um, but anyways, um, so you know, it was, it took such a toll on me that I didn't even realize it. And six at the six month anniversary of 9-11, I took the day off and I said, I want to go home. I want to watch all of the specials. I need to take a day and really let myself sort of, you know, deal with it because news producers, a lot of times are sort of like, 
you know, I hate to say this because obviously our jobs aren't as hard, but we're, we're, you can be sort of like police and fire where you have to sort of laugh and remove yourself from the situation to deal with it. When you're dealing with, you know, murder suicides and SWAT team standoffs and really just horrible, horrible things every single day, you have to find a way to be able to deal with that and not just like, you know, crumple up into a ball of depression and, right. you know, and cover these stories all the time. So, um, you know, like, I really uh, similar to you, me. similar to you, I, um, went to university of Florida for journalism, uh, thinking that I wanted to be in news and thank goodness they had such a great program. You could actually, you know, try it out at their news station. And I, like you, I was like, Oh no, this isn't for me. It was too many deadlines, too much negativity. You know, I was like, no, no, I, I'm like, I want to be storytelling, you know? Yeah. So how did you make that hard. shift from news into uh, other That's television crazy. programming? So it was a very difficult transition. Um, I did leave for two years to launch a uh, entertainment news show, very similar to Good Day LA. And I actually had to move back to Ohio to launch it. It was called The Daily Buzz. Um, it was my first foray into executive producing. So it was a great experience for me, although I was miserable not being in Los Angeles. I came back as soon as I could. And then I thought, okay, now I've done executive producing, budgets, managed staff, uh, you know, entertainment news. Now I can sort of transition, you know, into more like n not <laughs> local news coverage. You know what and I really love about that part of your story is you literally left somewhere you love to go do this experience to get that experience yeah. so that you could move into the next type of programming. And that's such good information to people that are wanting to get into the business. Look at, you know, what you gave up and what you did. And you went to all lengths to learn a, a totally different part of the industry. And I really, I think that's, you know, uh, thank you. I, I applaud I, that. I tell people all the time as a coach, you know, you, you have to take chances. And especially when you're young enough. I mean, I wasn't that young. I think I was like 31 or so. It wasn't like, you know, I was a total baby. But I mean, I was sort of like, if not now, when? You know, you got to do it. And it certainly wasn't going to happen in Los Angeles, which was the number two market in the country. And trust me, I tried you know, at Fox, I was, you know, begging for opportunities to be an executive producer. And, and, you know, the morning news didn't have one and they weren't going to make me one. And but I, I just, think it's, I think it's brilliant that you went to another market to learn it, to come back and say, Hey, I have this experience. I yeah. think that's brilliant. Thank you. And, and, and then I came back and no one would hire me. So <laughs> I, I, uh, I finally, you know, I, I kept getting all these offers all over the country to go back to local news. And I just said, you know, no, I, I, I can't. Um, and then my, you know, my savings were dwindling. Uh, it had been, you know, five or six months. I had taken a job like in an ad agency just to work. Um, but I refused to work in local news because I knew I'd get sucked back in. And finally, a friend got me an interview with an agent who to this day still is a very good friend and helps me all the time, Babette Perry. She is beloved in the industry. And she looked at my resume and said, this is ridiculous, you're not working. And she sent it to E! and she sent it to Entertainment Tonight. And I had like, oh, she sent it to um, Extra. And I had interviews it, like the next day. And I had job offers within three days. Wow. And I was, I did a pilot for E immediately that ended up becoming a show called the daily 10. Um, and then I got an offer from ET to work on this show called the insider with Pat O'Brien uh, and Lara Spencer, which I ended up taking. It got me into the director's guild. I moved my way up very quickly there. Um, from I the love that story. And I know bad, yeah. bad. And I think that's, that's yeah. awesome. You, would you say to somebody that wants to be in a, a producer that it would make sense, obviously to get an agent. Cause that seems to be what catapulted you. It did catapult me, but, um, you know, working on a show like Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood, they loved that I came from news because they needed somebody who could turn stories really quickly. They had a lot of people who were long form uh, producers, you know, writers mm -hmm. um, who could take, you know, a bucket of 25 tapes and sit there all week and put like these beautiful, you know, 18 minute 
long form weekend, you know, showcase pieces together. They needed somebody who could like break news, you know, turn it over. And I became their breaking news producer before I was a show producer there. And my story would change 15 times a day, you know, because now someone died and now someone was in a DUI and now someone, you know, so I was their news person. Um, and this again was, this was 2005. So there was no TMZ. There was no, there were no gossip websites. There wasn't even video on, on the web yet. So um, they were still sort of the, the end all be all of entertainment news. And so still at seven o'clock at night was your first dose of entertainment news. So isn't um, it always so interesting how life is like a puzzle and, you know, had you not done the news, you wouldn't have yeah. been a great producer for that particular type of segment. So I always think, you know, everything we do always has a reason and a purpose for what we're meant to do. So what was the second Emmy for? So the second Emmy was actually Spectrum, which was such a lovely surprise because, um, you know, I had no idea that they that they included me in the nomination. I went to Spectrum mostly as a consultant and I helped them get ready to launch. And then I ended up um, really helping oversee mostly as an executive producer, um, their Giselle Fernandez um, spotlight show. Um, and, you know, it was uh, actually one of the uh, episodes we did was on your partner um, Kat Curry Williams and her husband Scott Williams and Shane's inspiration, um, which they founded. And I was just so, um, you know, I, I just love their story so much. And Giselle did this series, LA Stories, which she still does, where she would spend an hour um, really telling the stories of people in Los Angeles who made a difference. And my entire career has always been about making a difference or people who make a difference or you know, there's always been, besides my time at Entertainment Tonight, where there's literally absolutely nothing to do with that whatsoever, <laughs> um, I have always tried to focus on, you know, the good. So um, I love that. That's why we're kindred spirits. <laughs> so, and, and especially as I've gotten older now, I've really said, you know, I've done enough of the, you know, the bullshit and I've done talk shows. I mean, I worked on Ricky Lake and enough of the silliness that now I'm, I really w would like to spend more of my time focusing on the good. And so in this series, you know, we really focused on a lot of people who were good. So I did a lot of the research and I set up a lot of the shoots and I wrote all of the questions and I oversaw the shoots and the cameras and, you know, the edits and all of that stuff while they were searching for an executive producer, because I didn't want it. I was really just into the consulting piece helping them, you know, find the right people and helping with a lot of it. So when they went and, and submitted their Emmy, uh, you know, who they wanted to nominate for them is when Spectrum did. I was not expecting them to include me. I had no idea about any of it. When they won, I didn't know I was included. And oh then gosh. about a month later, I got an email um, saying, how would you like your name to appear on your Emmy? And I thought, <laughs> what? <laughs> and so That's I emailed Cater Lee, who runs the whole um, division, and I said, what is this? And she said, oh, Robin, of course we included you. You launched the whole show. And I just <laughs> that thought that awesome. that was the loveliest, loveliest thing. And so, yes. And so I, I got that Emmy for uh, launching that show. So that's and excellent. And I, I think Spectrum News does a great job. I really think it's a great network. Uh, in fact, Catherine yes. Curry and I were just on there talking about uh, She Angels Foundation. Thanks to you, Robin, you booked that. And um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm just so happy to have you on today and that we're collaborating on some exciting projects and you just bring so much uh, good energy and expertise to the table. And, you know, we bef definitely agree that we both want to be making programming that's for the greater good. Uh, you know, why not? And I think people are hungry for it. So I'm, I'm excited to about what's ahead. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I am thrilled to have you on. If people want to reach out to you, you do also coach uh, I actors. Do. And I know you've worked with people on like shows like The Talk, which I love. Yes. And, um, and they can reach you at robinraden.com. Uh, yes. And uh, follow you on social media. Yes, uh, I'm you... at Robin Raiden on Instagram, uh, which is where I'm probably the most active. And I'm on Twitter 
at pop news girl, which I don't even know why. <laughs> but I'm not as active there, but um, they can find you. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty easy to find just by Googling my name. So yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And thank well, you for having uh, me. Thank you for being on and look forward to all of our collaborations. And uh, me too. we want everybody to remember to follow us, the She Angels Foundation on social media. You can find us at She Angel Investors on all of the social media. And uh, of course, visit our website, become a member. Uh, we have an amazing lineup of women like Robin that are part of our She Angel Foundation group. Thank you, Robin, for being here. Thank you. Everybody, remember to invest in her and make it a great week. Thanks, Robin. Thanks. Our theme music was created and produced by Lindsay Tomasic.